uh, or Jay Booty, as they call it. <laughs> Get Jay Booty's uh, opinion on. Jake, how you doing, my friend? Thanks so much for the time. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes sir. There we go. Yes, nice. sir. There we go. Nice. Nice. 2021, man. I mean, what? we're living in the future. It should be easier than this, but <laughs> here we are. Well, one of these days, Jake, uh, we got to get you in studio. Absolutely, here. It'd be fantastic to. To, to chat with yeah. you. But you know, you, you put out a tweet, Jake, and I. I just, I, I kind of loved it because you seem to be uh, the centerpiece of discussions and the example that people use for uh, skipping the bowl game and getting ready for the NFL draft, whether it's Kenny Pickett or Kenneth Walker, uh, people will refer back to Jake Butt's case, yeah. uh, former surefire first round pick, plays in the bowl game, gets hurt, and the rest is history. Uh, you responded to that. Can you tell us how you feel about being used as the example? It's funny because you have people using my situation to argue why they should play and why they shouldn't play. So they're using my, there's people using my situation to to defend their viewpoint that are polar opposite. And I think in football, it's so complex that a generality doesn't work. You know, for me, everyone asks if I regret it. Believe, I do not regret it. Um, I learned a lot of things. I went through trials. I think there's something to be said about that. There's some, you know, physical, emotional growth that goes on through that. But I may have different values and principles than the next man. And when you're staring down the barrel, you have four, five, ten plus million dollars waiting for you. And all you got to do is just, you know, get through this. I can't knock a guy for sitting out. Um, and everybody, the big argument here is, well, why play the whole season? And the way I look at it is, is you know, to, from the beginning of the season up until your last game, whether it's the conference championship or your last game of the regular season, there's a body of work where you can increase your draft status at that point. How much can you really increase your draft status in one bowl game? At that point, it's like your downside risk heavily outweighs your potential upside benefit. So for guys to sit out and take care of their future, I can't knock them. And Braylon, you know this too. The combine's in March. So if you play New Year's Eve, you know, you have a week of traveling, you really can't jump right into lifting. You can't start hitting the combine prep hard till mid-January. Yeah. If you sit out and you know you're done at the end of the regular season, now you start that combine prep first week of December, that's another month to go out there and run a better 40, yeah, bench yes press, more reps, more combine prep. People aren't understanding that, man. And where's the loyalty? Where's the loyalty? Notre Dame, Brian Kelly, you're, you had a chance to go to the college football playoff. Whew. He left and didn't even give those players a time of day. There is no loyalty. And we're holding these young men, these 18 to 20 year olds, to a higher standard than we are the $8 million coach. Don't give me that, man. Let these guys make the best decision for themselves. Yeah, Jay Booty, I couldn't say it any better than that. You know, it's tired of like all these coaches, these guys making these, you know, hundreds of million dollars. They're getting these table, these deals on the table and they get to up and book. Meanwhile, when a player wants to do something, now you got players like our coaches like Dabo Sweeney coming out and complaining. Lane Kiffin wants to come out of yep. Ole Miss and complain as well. I agree with you. Tell them to shut the hell up. Hey, Jake, getting into the Michigan team this year, obviously, I know Ryan and Mass have questions. I'm going to keep it with the tight ends. How good was it to see the emergence of the tight ends? Michigan's always been a place where the tight end was important. You, Devin Funches, when he was young, you look at Carson Butler, you look at Benny Jopru, that I played with Jeremy Tooman in the 97 National Championship game. How good was it to see Schoolmaker and Schoon. all come on this season for the Michigan Wolverines <laughs> and Kate McNamara? Yeah. Oh, man, I, I, I can't say this enough how proud I am of those dudes. And, yeah. and really, obviously, the flashy stats are the one-hand catches. You see Eric make a one-hand catch for a touchdown. Schoon goes out there and makes a one-hand catch down, down the red zone. Those are the flashy plays. But, you know, when you're a football, former football player, you watch the game with a different eye, they block their asses off. Ooh, they are took the words they're doing my insert plays and snapping linebackers' necks back. They're lining up and doing it again and again. They're, they're really – their blocking is what's really most impressive to me. Um, and as you saw in the Ohio State game, you know, we won because we won the physical battle up front. That was the O-line – and the tight ends, and, and I know you see the receivers downfield blocking oh, too, right? Oh my God. They're downfield blocking, and that just shows a love for the game, a love for the process, and a love for one, one another. So, um, of course, I'm biased. I always love the tight ends, but it's the collective picture, what the offense has been able to do from a physicality standpoint that I think is most impressive. I couldn't agree with you more. Some Somebody that you know well, Lloyd Carr, he always taught me, 
when you do what you're supposed to do, things that you want to happen, happen. And Eric All and Schoolmaker have been destroying offensive linemen, linebackers, and chipping, run blocking, pass protecting, down the field blocking all season. When you get a bone like the one hand catches against Iowa, when you get a bone like the play they've been working on for two years that works to beat Penn State, those things happen because you're doing everything right. And I agree with you. Those tight ends are getting their just due now, Ryan. Talking to Jake Butt, former Michigan tight end, one of the great Michigan tight yes, ends sir. in program history, um, former fifth-round pick of the Denver Broncos. And Jake, I want to just go back to, to your time in Denver after the injury. Did you – professional athletes, high-class a- athletes know their bodies. Did you know – that you weren't the same player that you were after the injury that before? Like, is there something you could tell? Or did you feel like you were the same guy after the injury than before? Because you did re-injure your, you tore your ACL again, right? Yeah, you tore your ACL again in Denver. That's the story. So I tore my first one going into my sophomore year um, at Michigan. I played in a game six months after surgery. They said it was the fastest recovery they'd ever seen. That was the only time I'd ever been hurt in my life. I missed one game. Then I tore it in the bowl game. I missed my entire rookie year. It was like an 18-month rehab. Believe it or not, coming out that spring OTAs in that camp, I was playing damn good ball, man. And, um, you know, your, your offensive coordinator has a big play sheet, 100 bread and butter plays, and then you flip over the play sheet, and he's got a couple brackets for specific guys he think are playmakers that he wants to get the ball to. Well, there was Demarius Thomas. There was Rest Emmanuel in peace. Sanders. And my name was right there up there with them. I was playing really, really good ball there in Denver. And, uh, you know, it's week four, playing Kansas City and Arrowhead on the road. I'm running down on scout team kickoff. They had me up to run a sluggo, Braylon. They had me Oh, up not the sluggo. <laughs> I'm licking my chops, man. I'm thinking I'm going to put I'll, I'll play Kelsey and put myself on the mat. I freaking tear my ACL on scout team kickoff. That was my third time, and that one really killed me. Uh, I re that for nine months. You know, got over it, was all right. Got cleared. First day of camp was the next day. The following day, I retore both my meniscus. Oh. Missed the entire season. I, at that point, I'll be honest to you. I really, I wanted them to cut me. I was like, Don't make this decision for me, man. This is torturous. Damn. Damn. You guys just cut me and let this be over. They stuck with me. Going into my fourth year, I'm buried on the depth chart. We had, we drafted a tight end two straight years. We brought one in in free agency. No one gave me a chance. I was the only tight end to not miss a practice all camp. I had a hell of a camp. I made the team against all odds. Week one, I dislocate both my knuckles in my Oh, my uh, God. Index in my middle finger. Obviously, that makes catching the ball really hard. That makes blocking really hard. But I didn't want to miss time. So I'm playing with one hand all season. Three weeks later, I pull my hamstring. um, It's go on IR for the rest of the year. And then this offseason, I just kept tweaking my hamstring. And at some point, I'm like, man, you know, I got a Michigan degree. I'm a smart guy. I like to think. I, it's, I'm not having fun with this anymore. I need to transition to something else. And, um, you know, it's the, the physical aspect as an athlete you can overcome. Yeah. At some point, the mental really starts to weigh on you, especially when it's over and over and over again. And it kind of strips your joy, at least in my case. No, nah, you're 100% correct. Uh, I want to touch on something you just said real quick. Vaughn Miller, that actual training camp that he's talking about, tweeted a lot about uh, Jay Booty. He posted some pictures of Jay Booty and talked about how well he's playing. I do oh. remember that training camp. I think I was at the network at the time, uh, Big Ten Network. But uh, also, I just know exactly what you're talking about, that mental. That's how it was for me towards the end of my career. You know, I had a meniscus tear. Then I had a bad surgery to repair that. Then I had a bad surgery to clean out those loose bodies. And it's like as you're playing. And you got those fingers. Like, oh, yeah, I definitely got a hand, so I, I know what you mean. But you just you feel it, and you're like, you know what? <sighs> You know what? I got the Michigan thing going on. I, I, I work hard. I've proven that I can be in this place. And you say, you know what? It's time to step aside. I'm glad you made that decision while you're still healthy. I'm really proud of you. Jake. Yeah, I, just, I remember, you know, I, it was the, when I knew I was with the Bears and we had a conditioning test at 8 a.m. I, w- I slept from 10 p.m. till midnight that night and then tossed and turned all the way till 8 a.m. I normally love the conditioning test and want to win them. I was running that conditioning test, and it was the strangest feeling I've ever felt in my life. And I'm like, this isn't right, man. I, I need a, I need a transition. And that's ultimately when I knew. So, yeah, you, when you know, you know. Yeah. Jake, I wanted to ask you about uh, the future here in college athletics. Uh, when do you think an athlete, a kid, let's say Aiden Hutchinson, playing in a playoff game, are they going to start taking those off? 
instead of you know just the bowl games? Do you think athletes will start taking off these extra championship games? I would think not, um, because a national championship is it, it's def, it's way different than the Peach Bowl. You know, it's it's another level um, from a historical standpoint, and, and to get a ring and win a trophy, it'd be really hard to leave your teammates with you know the body of work that you put together to get there. Um, you know what I'd be interested in is, you know, if they expand this playoff, that's expanded revenue. Can yep. they give profit share? Can they find a way to incentivize these guys yep, to sure. play um, in these games? I think that's probably where we're heading. Um, and I think in the, the lesser bowl games, you're going to see more and more guys sit out. And, and who are we to say, you know, what's best for another man? And you got to make the best decision for you. Yeah. Jake, I'll tell you, man, you got a hell of a future in this business. Hopefully you man, stick with it. And, uh, right here yeah, sports. man. Like, <laughs> what are we calling you? You've been doing your own show. What are we calling you? Yeah, what are we calling you? I told you. I told you. We're having him on. Said. He's staying on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I listen to you guys work from time to time, so uh, okay. I'm a fan. This is our first time, you know, connecting, man. Anytime. Anytime you guys like to have me on i'd be happy to join you so you got uh, what are you doing that. christmas week zoom the lights yeah we're right down yeah. the street jake but you'll be hearing from us my <laughs> friend thanks so much we certainly appreciate it thanks, great man. stuff there and uh love to have jake back in advance of the michigan georgia game and really we get in the weeds get i know really get in the weeds with him what are you rushing him for bring him back for crying out loud <laughs> get him next week hey.